So we're going to discuss the advanced structure and function of the cell membrane. So um, these are the objectives. What are the functions of cell membrane? What are the structural components of cell membrane? What are the permeability, movement, and the fluid mosaic model? So the cell membrane is a protective barrier. So it will protect the structure of the cell. Though this barrier is selective, it allows some things to enter the cell and does not allow others from entering. Then it also allows cell-to-cell -cell signaling or communication. And the cell membrane anchors the cytoskeleton, which usually provide the shape of the cell and allow transportation of materials. So this is the structure of cell membrane. It's a lipid bilayer. So you have the phospholipids as well as two types of protein. You have the peripheral protein, either on the superficial or the outer or the inner surfaces, or you can have integral proteins that will span through the whole membrane. So these are the um, phospholipids, which have a hydrophobic core and a hydrophilic end. The hydrophilic ends are water-soluble, while hydrophobic are water-soluble. So again, that just shows you the lipid bilayer, integral proteins, peripheral proteins, the phospholipid, the hydrophobic ends, and the hydrophilic ends. Hydrophobic, they are resistant to water. So the protein, the cell membrane mainly contains proteins and lipids, and they, um, we have different types of uh, transport mechanisms within the cell membrane. You have uniport, where you just transport one substance across the cell membrane, Symport, where two substances are transported together, and an antiport, where one substance comes in and another one gets out of the cell. So the phospholipids contain a phosphate head, which is hydrophilic, and this end usually attracted to water. And then we have the fatty acid tails, which are hydrophobic, and these are uh, repelled by water. So the phospholipids are usually arranged as bilayer. So as you can see, these are hydrophilic, hydrophobic. So you have two layers, phospholipid bilayer. Okay. So again, that's a phospholipid bilayer, the hydrophob hydrophilic poles and the hydrophobic tails. So the tails are water resistant or nonpolar, the hydrophobic portions. So the phospholipid bilayer ensures that the cell acts as a barrier. And then remember, we have the glucose and lipids that are also parts, uh, components of the cell membrane. Okay. So, um, the cell membrane usually separates living cell from the aqueous environment and acts as a thin barrier. So therefore, it's able to control uh, substances in and out of the cell. Remember, there's a hydrophobic versus the hydrophilic polar ends. And permeability of these molecules um, is what determines the permeability of the membrane. So the membrane is a semi-permeable barrier and it has protein channels that will allow some substances to pass and do not allow other substances um, from passing. Okay, so you have sugar, amino acids, water and salts as well as um, ammonia. So inside, uh, these are located inside the cell and these are studied outside the cell. So the cell membrane is a lipid bilayer and we have lipids that trans, uh, um, we have lipids as well as the transmembrane proteins that will span through the the membrane. These transmembrane proteins are the ones that act as semi-permeable channels. The transmembrane proteins are the integ integral proteins. For example, you can see they span through all the just studied either inside or outside. So we have different amino acids that form the nonpolar ends. Okay. And the, uh, the nonpolar ends are so um, the polar ends are hydrophilic, while nonpolar ends are hydrophobic. Then with membrane, so on the outer surface um, of the membrane, we have the uh, peripheral proteins, and the ones that span through are usually the integral proteins. And remember, within the membrane, that's where you have your nonpolar amino acids, which are hydrophobic and anchor the uh, proteins into the membrane. So the hydrophobic portions and hydrophilic will be the ones towards the, the heads of the, um, 
the, the polar aspects of the phospholipids. So that's where the polar amino acids are located. So this just shows you examples of uh, the different uh, proteins. You can appreciate the nonpolar hydrophobic um, helices. Okay. So oh. then um, we have the proton pump uh, channel. So all these proteins that are on the screen, they may act as water channels or proton pump channels depending on where um, which membrane we are discussing or which um, um, cell so the main functions of the cell membrane proteins are transport so through facilitated diffusion they can act as ion channels they can act as pumps to aid in active transport they are they form receptors for hormones and neurotransmitters such as g proteins then they act as switches so they are able to cause signal transduction they help with cell-to-cell -cell recognition. A good example is like in antigens, the surfaces of the cells. And then proteins also serve as junctional proteins in the intercellular junctions, such as cell division molecules. And within the cell, they act as second messenger enzymes that receive the signal from the receptors. Yeah. So these are the membrane proteins. You can see from outside the cell to inside the cell, they can act as transports. They can act as second messengers, whichever the channel for transport, sending messengers with enzymatic activity, they can act as cell surface receptors, they can act as cell surface identity markers such as antigens, and cell addition molecules, and attachment of cytoskeleton inside the, the cell. And this cytoskeleton are what will ensure the shape of the cell. So the membrane proteins usually determine the specific functions of the cell. And we have two types of protein, the peripheral proteins that are loosely on the surface. And um, a good example are antigens because they serve as cell surface identity markers. Then integral proteins span through uh, the lipid by their good examples. So this here, this is an integral protein acting as either channels or pumps for transport. So again, this is your lipid bilayer, the hydrophilic that are water soluble, and the hydrophobic tails that are hyd uh, water resistant. So this is your phospholipid bilayer. This is the integral protein, and peripheral proteins are usually studied on the surface of the cell. So the cell membrane is like a fluid mosaic. Uh, it has a fluid mosaic model. So the structure membrane is a fluid mosaic uh, pattern. So you have a collage of proteins and other molecules. So apart from proteins and phospholipids, you also have um, carbohydrates that are studied, lipids that are studied onto this um, cell membrane. So um, you can appreciate the cytoskeletons attaching onto the cell membrane, cholesterol, the transmembrane proteins, and so on and so forth, peripheral proteins, the glycoproteins, and the glycolipids. So cell membrane carbohydrates play a role in cell to cell recognition so a cell is able to distinguish from one cell and a good example of this, these carbohydrates are the antigens that are on the surface of the cell and these are usually important in organ and tissue development as well as they form a basis for rejection of foreign cells by the immune system so the immune system is able to recognize cells by the antigens so if a cell does not have an antigen uh, that the immune system can recognize, then the immune system is going to destroy the cell. Okay. So movement across the cell membrane, we have um, diffusion, for example, from a high concentrated region to a low concentrated region. So that's how um, diffusion occurs until you attain an equilibrium. So from high to low concentration. Next, you have simple diffusion where you just move from high concentration to low concentration. Uh, this simple diffusion, you have passive transport where no energy is needed. So like movement of water from high to low concentration. So that's passive transport with no water needed. While um, osmosis is movement of water molecules from a region where you have high water molecule concentration to a region of low water molecule concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. Then we have facilitated diffusion. This occurs, it's facilitated, so facilitated by protein channels. So you need a protein channel to allow, and these protein channels are integral proteins. 
So they allow specific molecules across a cell membrane. Again, facilitated diffusion does not need energy. So from a high concentrated area to a low concentrated area through a protein channel. Then active transport is where there is movement of molecules against a concentration gradient. Movement against concentration gradient, therefore you use energy. So usually there's a conformational change where um, that transports solutes from one side of the membrane to the other and a protein pump may be used and these pump are the ones that uh, contain ATP. There are ATP pumps that produce the energy that will be used to move molecules from a low concentrated region to a high concentrated region against the concentration gradient by use of energy in form of ATP. So next, uh, in active transport there are many uh, models and mechanisms to remember that ATP will be used to move from a low concentration to a high concentration against a concentration gradient. So ATP has to be extruded, so you move from low to high concentration. You can see low concentration to high concentration against a concentration. So you have an antipod that can be used or a sympod. So an antipod is going to bring in one molecule and take out one molecule. While a sympod, you have two molecules being transported towards the same direction. So passive transport is divided into simple diffusion, where from high to low, uh, low concentration, a good example is lipid. Then we also have facilitated transport, where you need to use a protein channel from high concentration to low concentration gradient. Then we have active transport. So passive transport has simple diffusion and facilitated transport. While active transport is against concentration gradient from low to high concentration by use of protein pump, which is ATP for energy. So this is the summary. Passive transport, you can be simple or facilitated through a protein, or you can have active transport where an ATP molecule will be used. So when you have large molecules, how do they move in and out of the cell? Mainly through vesicles and vacuoles. So that is where endocytosis comes in. Endocytosis, you can have two types, phagocytosis, which is cellular eating of solids, or pinocytosis, which is cellular drinking of liquids. So endocytosis brings in molecules inside the cell, while exocytosis is when you extrude the cell material outside, you export exocytosis. So this is endocytosis. As you can see, phagocytosis, when you bring in the cellular uh, solids into the cell, then they fuse with the lysosome for digestion. Then pinocytosis is fluid that will uh, bind onto the cell membrane, then it will be enclosed and taken to the lysosome for destruction. So you can have non-specific process or receptor-mediated endocytosis, and that is usually triggered by a molecular signal. So receptors that are on the cell membrane will detect the material outside the cell. This material will bind onto the receptors, causing invagination of the cell membrane into a membrane-bound vacuole that will be taken up by the lysosome for destruction. So that's receptor-mediated endocytosis. Thank you.